You've chosen a podcast from Low Moon Uprising. Enjoy. Uh, what you see is a musty chamber that smells like an animal pen. Yeah. The walls glisten with moisture, and the floor looks smooth. I'm cracking for traps in the doorway. Okay. It's a roughly 20-foot diameter cavern, and you see a pair of stalagmite forma- formations that almost reach the ceiling, but not stalactites lined up with them, which is rare, but two stalagmite formations that almost reach the ceiling. First check for traps in the doorway, roll percentile dice. Water dripping from the ceiling. Okay. So you are right behind him. You can see into the room as well. Uh, Jake is right behind that, can see into the room, but only the right half, which is up to the stalagmite pillars, basically. And then comes Bezor, so you're back at the junction, and you, so you can see the very right half, so you can see the edge of the two pillars, that's it. Uh, and then Faze, and everybody else is still down the hallway toward the pit, unless you like, squeeze through and go stretch, stretch out the other way. Um, anyway, it does not appear to be trapped. In the back left corner of the, well, corner looks like, almost like an alcove of the cave, you can see a pile of straw, and then in it there seems to be some other material like burlaps or leather or something. And... Partially buried in it toward the back seems to be some kind of animal with mangy gray fur, but it's asleep. I got my dagger and my holy symbol, and I approach it. Okay. You're ready to move silently? Stay on. I always know he's there. What is it? Move silently. Move silently. Danny, you see him approaching this animal silently. It's an animal. Appears to be some kind of large, gray, mangy furred animal. I mean, it's very. And it could sad. just be a rat, but it looks like the fur is more thin than that. Thin and soft. Careful! No, it's way too big. It's oh. it's uh, unburied. You think it'd be at least a foot and a half to two foot long? I will follow. Okay. All right, you sneak forward. And what did you roll? Twenty-nine. Okay. Um, as you're about halfway across the room, which puts you a little less than 10 feet from the edge of the straw and a little, probably about 12 feet from the, the creature, um, it opens its eyes and looks at you. Stop. Okay. You may, I stare down. He is not surprised, nor are you. You may roll and stare. Okay. Good luck. Uh, in fact, Danny can roll initiative as well. Oh! Jake can roll initiative. Yay. Jake. Go, go, murder hobos. Go. Can I tell if it's undead? Oh, I can, I can use animal. Uh, it does not look to be undead, no. Okay, so... Nope. It appears to be an animal. Its eyes show D6. pupils and it looks like an animal. Okay, I am quick drawing. Okay. You had your dagger out. I did. Well, I got it. He, he, he walks with his dagger out so he can quick draw the short sword. Oh. Then it's two on his shoe. Is it being a hobos? Oh, yeah. Well... Next. Okay. Or uh, nine. Okay. Um. All right. So missile fire initiative. It'll only be spells if you had something you wanted to cast. You could do slime if you want to. I'll find out what animal it is. Singular cattle drop. Roll a d20. Roll a single Appears to be an oversized badger. Oh. Badger. We're done. <laughs> Better hope it's not a honey badger. Yeah. Honey badger. We are Thank done. Thank you. I don't care. Okay. That's right. So, did well, you want to do something in Mystifier then or no? Um. No. Okay. Melee 9. Me. What'd you say? What? Autumn, what'd you say? I'm probably going to use. Okay. So, melee nine. That would miss a... Okay. The creature has not launched itself out of the straw yet. I'm a swangin'. Okay. You step up, you draw the short sword, and attack. I have a question. If I saw the insects, will it bother? Will it, will it help? Any? Are you serious? Yeah. So, I what summon insects does... I on both my d20s. What summon insects does is it creates a swarm of insects that attacks whatever creature you aim them at, and it does one hit point of damage to them per round. 
um, for one round per level. So they won't attack us, right? No. And then if, if you want, you can move them. Like you tell them to stop attacking one person and attack another. It's a very useful spell against spellcasters because as long as you put that on them, they can't cast. So using it against the badger would be overkill. It's not going to kill the badger, but it's a very useful spell against mages. So you might want to think about what spell is it? Wait, summon insects. There's one point of damage, no save oh, every no. round. I could freeze it. Great. I could freeze it. Well, okay. I could freeze it. But I missed both of my attacks I mean, because I, I rolled five on both my d20s. Five is when you're facing like the but same general direction. But there may be like guard dogs. There could be other attack animals. But this animal could be dangerous. It so. most likely is. But it, it also realizes that it's instantaneous, which means if things go poorly, you could use it later in the round. Like, if he jumps up and attacks the on and starts to do well, you could try for some time. I wish I had my stuff. I mean, I do. If it starts to do well. Yeah. Yeah, if you can attack with it other than smacking somebody with it. Yeah, yeah, you can I still hit it with the staff. It like still it. seems to be magical, powerful weapon, and you can heal it. That's right. Okay, anyway, so melee nine, you attack and miss. Eight... Seven. Me. Okay. I'll Seven. Um, you have not lunged out of the straw to attack yet. I could drown. It. I have great water. Yeah, I mean, it's not likely to drown it. You might yeah, distract it, drown, make it angry. No need. I'm not close enough to it. With that you could level. be. You step try, up and do it. Okay. So you step up next to Theon. You swing. Roll the hit. D twenty. Hi, hello. Hi. I make sure that was a six. Okay, so 16 plus the staff plus. So that's a hit. Roll a d6 damage. You missed, but she hit. Six. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay, she hit hard. That's just because it's going to attack you. It yelps in you know, pain, but then snarls and it begins to almost like screech. As it lunges forward to attack. Oh no! Yeah, I was not as Okay. Um, and on a one to four, it will attack Theon, who attacked it first. On a five or six, it will attack Janet. <laughs> but she did it! I know. And she also has it It'd slightly more range, but she uses the four staff, so. I have moved. Okay, it is attacking Theon. <laughs> I have better armor than you, so there's a solid oh, yeah. chance it'll hit you before me. Oh, wait. Okay. Just attack this thing and I had to move. I can put. I can use sparks. So, that's why. I but I'm saying the thing didn't do anything to us. It's a little bit us, right? Yeah, but. What is your AC? You know, uh, three. Well, it's not. What if it did attack us when we were walking by? Just whenever you want. Missed. Missed. And then the bite. The badger. Missed. Okay. So it, it jumped up. Now that it's outside the straw, you can see that it is easily three quarters the size of Janny. Mm. It's not small. And it looks wild. And th- throughout that round, as it was attacking, it got more and more angry. It's uh, frothing at the mouth and screeching as it attacks. Jeez. Okay. Jake. Oh, I didn't even hear how to say Jake hit. Okay, he stuck it with his sword, but it's still there, and we'll uh, go to initiative. Okay, now it is possible that Faze could enter uh, Bazor, Aaron. Bazor could directly enter the combat in some way if he chooses. Faze could, Brunson could. Uh, Faze just steps over to the side, out of the way. There's the three of them versus a badger should be able to handle it. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, so initiative. I'm going to missile fire. Okay. Let's see. Badger. Okay. And. Okay. Missile fire nine. That's awesome. Six. Any other missile fire? Oh, it's a system. Scarlet? No, it's not up there. Yeah, you're right, but in space, you can only go back as far as Brunson and the party at the moment. Okay. Okay? Um, so, it would be missile fire 9. And this fire 6, Brunson. Can I throw darts at it? 
You can, bearing in mind if you miss, there's a chance you made the party member because all three of them are... Never mind because I will miss. So. <laughs> Not going to risk it. Up. Okay. We go to Melee, nine, eight. Me. Okay. Um, I'm going to drop Rar on the ground. Okay. And then I'm going to swing again. You only take one swing if you drop the... Um, will Rar be able to act this round? No. Okay. As long as I hit. <laughs> well, he missed you three times. Maybe. This is the order of the day. Uh, sword missed. Dagger's going to do like no damage, but I rolled a 12. Who did you hit? Six. I rolled an injury. Okay. And that was what? Eight? Six. Seven? I attacked first, I just missed. Six. 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 Jake kills it. <laughs> Jake stuck it two times with his Holy sword and it dies. Holy However, it had worked up to quite a like howling screech before it actually dies. In fact, when it dies, it goes like this. And it lays on the ground and cries. It was all Brunson. <laughs> Brunson killed it. Okay. Yeah, Brunson. Now it is frosting Brunson at the mouth, don't forget. She's getting back at you for eating that goldfish that one time. <laughs> The imaginary goldfish that yeah. popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. It was real to her. I have that effect on badgers. <laughs> that effect on badgers. Uh, and uh, pretty much everyone else. That's just all. Got a problem with some and stuff? Alright, so. Okay. Quick, look for the loots. I'm looking for loots in the hay. No, we don't have time for loots. Look for babies. Yes, we do. We always have time for loots. <laughs> There's always okay, time. So you take a moment, you poke with your short sword around the straw and find nothing of value. Nine I will check babies. the rest of the room. Is there any loots? There's no okay, babies. You see. Two minutes okay, spent I'm... and you don't see anything. Let's go. We're gone. No loots to be had. It's magic. The badger is sleeping on a giant pile of coins. <laughs> Possible. So like I would have had badger babies. Okay. If it didn't, we would have had to kill him. So you're happy it didn't have badger. It's a fully grown badger that way. Okay. So are you going back to party formation? Let the team people lead. Yes. I'm taking the lead. No, I'm taking the lead. No. Yes. He always checks the lead. Yes, but he checks for traps. Yeah, he needs to check for traps. So. You don't Actually, know. skilled at it. <laughs> you will die. You're wise and observant. <laughs> However, he actually is skilled at checking for traps. Okay. okay so beyond like the Boom. <laughs> Goes to the left or to the right? To the right appears to be going to dump into a room. To the right. Okay, the left, uh, it turns sharply so you can only see about 15 feet. But if you step out, you can see around that corner and see where it goes before you go to your left. I will go, yes. Okay, that one also dumps into a room. Oh. So both of them are going into a room. Can I see which room is brighter? If you don't want to miss any of the story, Low Moon Origins, Uprising, or Outsiders, like and follow our podcast. Please share it with friends. Neither. They're both dark. Oh, I will go to the right. Okay. Because right is always right. All right. Dumping into a good-sized chamber, it looks like. The corridor ends at a very large chamber that is at least 40 feet wide and reaches about 50 foot long. The cavern is dimly lit from flickering embers in a fireplace situated in the room's center. So it's just a faint orange glow, nothing compared to the continual light that you're using to see by. Five large stalagmites are scattered about the room, two flanking the entrance, another along the east wall, and a final pair in the northeast corner. You guys listening? Yes. Get all that? Five stalagmites, mm-hmm. two at the entrance, another on the east wall. I'm going to tell you, even though we don't have directions <laughs> Right, another to your right, and then uh, ahead and to your left is a pile of burrs, and then also along the right wall is a large wooden chest that's adorned with a massive padlock. Directly all the way across are several exits, but they appear to be two feet in diameter, rough hewn corridors too small for humans to traverse. I think. Not I mean, just like army crawling. Maybe. Uh, no, two foot diameter. So top to bottom you could do two foot side to side. It would be very tight. Alright. 
Anyway, so you've got a big 40 foot by 50 foot room. You've got a pile of stuff to the left. I'm going to run towards the, to the chest. Right. You're going to run towards the chest? Well, brisk walk. Okay. Make it a job. I feel very lonely. I bet you if I threw this hard enough with that balloon, it would pop. Find out? No. Oh. Pick, <laughs> pick a room and go. I'm already going. I'm yeah. trying to go to the chest and I'm waiting for that. Uh, 15 traps in between here and there. <laughs> And you yeah, tell me where you're school. I think I've waited long enough. I know you told me to wait. I waited. <laughs> I'm telling you, this girl is like an Indianapolis walk right. I swear. Wait. Wait. Yeah. Wait. That's what their crosswalks say. Wait. Wait. Across the street is like, wait. Yeah, you wait. press it, and then if you press wait. it again, it just goes, wait. <laughs> and it's like, it's this super, like, like nonchalant guy's voice. He just does this. Okay. So you're briskly walking toward the chest. Um, I'm ready. <laughs> He's so good at that. <laughs> what is Danny doing? Huh? He's got to walk 30 feet. So. <laughs> We're going to stay back. It's probably going to be a bomb. Just board. move inside the room to the right or left. You're going to just move in a little bit to the right or left and let them come in? I'll move to the right. There's a stalagmite directly to your right, and then there's one a little further to your left. Which is basically like. It's like a rock formation that rises up out of the floor like a column, but it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling. Oh, it's usually it's made out of calcium that drips with water okay. from the... Uh, right or left? Right. Okay, so you're going to the right, and you're basically looking at the wall with the super doors. All right. Next comes Jake. Jake moves straight into the center and stands right. kind of between the steps, the lagmites looking out across the room. Trigger a trap. Uh, bunch oh. of badgers start pouring <laughs> out of the ceiling on top of you. Giant badgers. Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to be the scale, but I just want to give it a shape. They're all rabid. Rabid badgers. Rabid honey badgers just start pouring out of the ceiling. I'm dead in seconds. Oh, weird. <laughs> I'd leave the room. Honestly, like, I've honest. got a backup. Got a backup character. It'd be like a cartoon with a prize. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just cold. One thing you should never say in a role-playing game is, I've got a backup character. Oh, really? I just know you won't kill my character because it's the main plot point at the moment. <laughs> You're wrong about that. Um... I've never met a character your dad wasn't willing to kill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically this is the shape of the room. These are the little hallways that go off that look like two-foot diameter hallways. The chest is over here. The Ignore the lines because it's not to scale. Okay? The mound of stuff is like right here. The lagmite. Janny is right here checking the wall. The lagmite. Jake steps up between them. Next is Bezor. Aaron. Anyway, Bezor steps over to the left behind the stalagmite here. Baze. Baze will go here. It's not a Baze, Mom. Okay, then that leaves Brunson. Um, I'll go between Faze and Janie. Okay. Oh, no, Janie, behind the stalagmite. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Cover. <laughs> okay. And then that leaves Mark. He's just going to stand in the opening. And, and Charlotte, you can either go past Mark and get up and cram up into the room, or you can just stay back here. No, stay by the No baby badgers. Yeah. Like a little line of baby badgers. Okay. <laughs> you killed mom. Now you're, now you're our mom. <laughs> All right. Um, so as you are approaching the chest, I'm ready. Roll a d6. D6. That's a one. Okay. You are moderately surprised as... 16 honey fall from the ceiling. A swarm of rats. Now these are actual rats, not giant rats. So they're like twice the size of a hamburger bun. But they have long tails. But there's about uh, hundreds of them. Oh. And they swarm you. They move toward you and swarm you. Okay? No! Um, As your God for help! <laughs> no! no. Alright. And we'll go to initiative at that point for everybody. Oh no, I'm surprised. We should have fireball. Yeah. By the time they get to me, would I be on the surprise? No. Don't they have to run all the way across the room? Uh, Very some surprised. of them, but not all of them. While you're going, they have one segment of surprise at, at least. So. <laughs> <laughs> actually, have, you have three three decks, right? So that's four. 
where they have two segments of surprise. Bless you. Everyone needs their own initiative. If I'm going to... I rolled an eight. No. Six. Okay, and so you will take... Cast Reef Magic. Two points of damage. And there's there are Autumn stole my pencil this time. That's Josh's. This is Josh's. Okay, I'm gonna use it. You're still in Josh's. Okay. So we're gonna finish this combat and then we're gonna take our food break and then hopefully that time we'll have Josh and Cobra. Yeah, you can't go around and do it. It's okay. He's just sad like blast them. And the <laughs> That's okay. I'll make my wisdom safe. Put combat. Okay. We'll see what happens when his initiative comes up then. How many animals can I fit at once? You don't actually know for sure. How many rats? You did, are what did you do? Three rats, I think. But those were giant rats. Those yeah. were tiny. Two rats. Yeah, so you know you could do two. Yeah, but that was those were giant range. And they were giant rats. All right. So, anyway, anyone missile firing? Well, firing on the tiny rats that are around Dion and around Dion? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go to Melee nine. And you did did you hold it? I got eight. Melee eight. Okay. So you may attack the rats that are attacking you. Just so you know they're considered a swarm. So basically you're gonna do enough hit points to the total swarm and they'll be dead. Hundreds, but you have to dissuade them. Do I think I would be able to cast with Draw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think she could. Yeah, but there's a moment. If she can, if she casts a draw, you'll be out of the The first one, fourth, the other one suggested, but then that's the right course of action. Very fair. How wide is the swarm? Um, at you, not much wider than you are, but there's it trails off toward the tunnels, so it's maybe another six or so feet. Um, but on you, I mean, it's just like there's a rat here, there's a rat here, there's a rat here, there's a rat here. They're Stop. all in one. There's they're one, one up one inside spot, your pants. Right? They're no, they're spot. stretched out over about a seven foot wide area. Duck and cover. I'm going to say. Uh, Ganny, withdraw! And then I'm swinging. Okay. Okay. Like that. Better hope she has it, though. I won't be able to swing We should wait for um, I will drop her arm, and I guess swing with my dagger. Uh, that would be weird, wouldn't it? You will delay it, which means if she does it right away, then you would get it at all. Brar comes out, I was like, Just what are you doing? Declare your action. And you're in segment eight, Rats. what do you do? You yell, and then what? Drop Brar. No, make Brar okay. eat them. Put the dog on the ground. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's the point. And then, yeah. draw my dagger. Brar, smack. Okay. And then I telekinetically tell Rar to um, kill everything around If you want to say that you had your dagger in hand, I'm okay with that. Generally, your tactic. One dagger in hand, and then put Brar the short sword in hand. But you were surprised, so you couldn't draw your sword. You didn't draw your sword, so you went out of your hand. Okay. Alright, so segment 8, that. Segment 7. Yes. Okay, so we've got Bezor and uh, Brunson in 7. Bezor, go ahead. I'm going to try and. Do the psionic attack that Faze did before, because I don't know if it's in my capability or not. Come up sure. You can't, so you're gonna go, My mind hits them! Okay. Um, <laughs> nothing happens. But it doesn't take long either. So, that would be what, seven? You can do something else in six if you want. Oh. So, front and seven? Um, casting sleep on, um, like, the swarm, swarm of rats, of rats around the end. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast sleep beginning in segment seven. seven. I'm going off in segment six. Okay. I'll peek around them. Slightly. Yes. Alright. My, whatever. Uh, goes off in seven. Six. Yes. Draw uh, Aaron. Okay. So. Roll 4d6. Or 4 Yeah, 4d6. Two. Come on. Two. Oh boy. Two. What? Six. Oh, broke the turn. Two, so two, 12. Two, six. Total 12. That sucks. Okay, so. Bunches. 
of two, rats two, two. fall asleep. I just rolled two, two, three, two. Bunches of rats fall asleep. Um, but it is not enough to detour the entire swarm. Her, her. I can freeze half the rest of the animals. Remember I yelled at you to withdraw. Well, it's an option. So you can either try to freeze them, or you can withdraw. Or you can do something completely different, because you're free first. to do whatever you want. <laughs> you're going to freeze, like, four rats, and I'm just going to be standing there, like, yeah, I, dying. The last time I, I got, like, two of the last of them there in, like, a long range away from each other, and they were big rats. Most freeze so spells don't go by range. range. They go by... It does. Yeah, several people have a way to make fire, like plant ginger boxes and stuff like that. But oh, that's so cool. You won't have, have to fire as, as or like a torch or something. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Okay. Alright, stop talking. Same character. I'm so, the sleep spell went off, and we're in segment six now. Bezor is in six. Uh, You're in six. Okay, oh, Eric is out. On, Eric. Uh-oh. Eric should Eric, be able to make some serious splatter marks with these rats. Do <laughs> you imagine something there's like. Ha cha 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 Oh, sorry. Does he actually say that when he does it? Like in Bezor's mind, he hears ha cha 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 cha. A little that'll remain to be seen. All right, uh, the axe is out. You can attack with it at the end of the round if you so choose. Here we go to. Finally. To Thomas. No. Hey, Thomas. Segment six. What do you do, Autumn? What do you do in six? Freezing. Animal freeze. Okay? So you go, huh, and the spell goes off. Roll 2d6. Six. Nice. Ooh, that's uh, five. Nice. Ooh, that's 11 more. Hey. Okay. So between the um, sleep spell and the animal freezing spell, you have done enough falling asleep See? and holding to the rats that the, the swarm has become no longer cohesive. And so, what's left of them is running out the little holes in the wall. Awesome. Can I or stab stirring the corners. Can sure. Just you kill a few more. Out of anger. Eek, 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 Okay. Um, at that point, from behind the stalagmite that is furthest out and to the left, you see a, like a little burst of energy, and you see a badger that is dire badger, very much like the one you just killed, uh, but... Uh, no. Friendly? It doesn't appear to be friendly, but it doesn't appear to be villainous necessarily either. But anyway, it runs into one of the holes in the wall. Mm. There's a burst of energy behind this stalagmite, and then it disappears and takes off into one of the holes. I'm beginning to think we have a... If someone had a missile fire weapon at the ready and wanted to try to shoot it as it went, then you could do that. Otherwise, it's gone. Is Eric a missile fire weapon? Oh, no. We have a druid behind Thanks us. Thanks for You may take one shot. <laughs> He, he okay. It hits the wall next to the hole. Oh, I'm uh, I'm actually saying that out loud. I'm beginning to suspect we have a druid on our side. Okay, so we'll let those who want to search this room real quick, and then that's where we're taking our break. And that point, I'll catch you. I want a chest. Okay, yeah, yeah, you check the chest for traps. We'll search the rest of the room. I run a chest and I check the traps. Okay, roll check the traps. After this adventure, we're splitting up party treasure. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then maybe we can do some training. Oh man, Josh. You got more stuff than a DM. What do you say? <laughs> Almost as much stuff. What do you say? What do you got? 46. Okay, it does not appear to be trapped. However, right. it is locked. With a large I will try box. to unlock it. Okay, you may roll. I got enough this stuff on it. Looks like it's a I pretty good lock, four tougher four than normal. <laughs> It does not stick. You can try again, but each time you go dead. But it is so a negative. I will try again and I'm just going to get my percentage. And then you can use the run method yeah. of opening chest. Yep, that is a way. That is a 14. Okay. Um, all right, the lock is picked. I open the chest. What's in the chest? Boom, okay. fireball. Several things. Uh, you see a folded piece of paper that is roughly. It's probably a foot by a foot, but it's folded up into quarters. Okay. Um, you see an ivory scroll tube that has an intricate locking mechanism on it. No. <laughs> it's going to be clear. Uh, and there's a rack that has six potions. It's my Oh, boy. And uh, a, what appears to be a scroll. Mage scroll, or purple scroll, or scroll, or just oh, wait, a very nice paper. <laughs> Virus. 
and a sack that from the outside looks like it's probably full it's of money. Dancing. <laughs> okay, I start, take the money sack, put it in my sack, okay. and start on the nice... Interested in giving financially to Low Moon and support the campaign? Text L-M-G-I-V-E, that's L-M-G-I-V-E, to 419-419-0095. Okay. It's locked. The ivory yeah, scroll too, which has an intricate locking so system. Yes. Yes, it is locked, and you mean, you set off the trap. You possibly you tried to pick it, but I, it looks pretty complex. Yes, I will try to pick it. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Ninety-nine. <laughs> you break it. <laughs> no. I try again. Okay. Ninety-seven. No. One more time. I think 36. Like, remember no. the name while I'm talking to them? You do not think that you're going to be able to say it. Basically, it's a series of buttons. Looks like about 30 buttons. And pushing the right buttons in the right order will probably open it and then you just cap off. Oh, I want some groceries. Everybody. <laughs> That should pretty well take care of the loaf, I think. This is the <laughs> group that I will conform to. <laughs> I, I set it down to the side, and then I go to the second. Okay, uh, now, scroll. during this time, everyone else is there, and you see what he's doing, and whatever. Um, so, just be aware, it's not being done in secret or anything. <laughs> okay? So what else are you going to look at? The, set, the next scroll. Okay. I think there's another one in a case. There is a scroll that's not in a case. And yeah, then well, there is a folded over piece of paper. I will look at that one that's on the case. Okay, it is a mage spell. Or maybe more than one. I set it down and I go to the next the folded up one. Okay. The folded up piece of paper is a map. Oh. Some items. Go down a party of scriptures. <laughs> Looks like that. I didn't mind photocopying. We can do it during the break. Uh, yeah, huh. and okay. What a weird combination. I will go to the mage spell. I don't have any <laughs> idea what it is. Correct. I turn around. Who's the closest mage to me? Tommy and Ron both roll a d6. Which one? <laughs> Ready? Ready? Six. Brunson. Also, Brunson's not a gray elf and is a longtime companion. <laughs> hey, Brunson, yeah, you didn't mean it first. Catch. Oh, yeah, he didn't mean the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dexterous. So. Okay. Grab anyway, it. he has <laughs> given you a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a, I mean, it's a scroll. Oh, sweet. What spell is that? Thanks. Try it. I'll get it later. Can I look at it without, like, learning it? Can I, like, see what spell it is without learning it? And blah, blah, blah. You. I mean, I can read clear. You can look at it to see if it's a spell that you know. Okay. If you don't know it, then you can look at it to try to just kind of get a hint of it, like a gist of it, but you're not going to get the name of the spell. With Read Magic. Um, with Read Magic, you, you can definitely read it without having to, like, take it as one of your spells. I'll try to look at it see if it's a spell I know. It is not. Okay. Do I, do I know what rank it is? Neither first or second. Without actually looking mm. deeply into the room, the chances are narrowing. <laughs> so okay, yeah, I will. Uh, I cast read magic. Yeah, Dude, look at it this way. It's a scroll for both of us. I know. Both I, I, get I, it. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, if you don't know it, I might. Know I have it. the right spell, so I'll just write it for you. Oh, you have the right spell to know it, huh? Yeah. Uh, I can read it <laughs> and write it. Okay. You're gonna fit right write it. Read magic. Okay, you cast read magic. Um, you read it. It is actually a third level spell. However, it is uh, short for a third level spell, which is why you thought it was first or second. And it is complex in nature. Um, so it is a transmutation spell, and it is called improved reduced person. Mm-hmm. It makes people tiny. Reduce person. Like a large. Okay. Basically, the spell reduces a person for an extended uh, 
reduction to the smaller and also an extended period of time longer than, say, shrink, which you were last minutes. Brunson. All, oh, it looks like all equipment worn or carried by the target is similarly reduced. It's just like and any out. items that leave the possession of the subject re re uh, return to their normal size immediately. If they drop a sword or something. It'd be like in Champions mm -hmm. one If they fire an arrow, it would become normal size and flight would be normal. Yeah. Nice. It's like, um... Oh, like mini sniper. Quick, Charlotte. Right. Where is that coming from? Yeah. <laughs> it's like Where arrows are just coming from? shooting out from somewhere yeah, in but, space. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, like you make Jake so. tiny, and you just toss him one of his long swords out of his face, and he goes, yeah, he like, up. pierces somebody in half. <laughs> no, we're talking about, like, Charlotte. Like, she could be the mini tiny Charlotte. Oh, oh shoots, shoots an arrow, an arrow. arrow comes up to be... That's really side. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Like mini sniper. It seems to be quite, quite, that'd be quite excellent to a fan bush. Think about it. Yeah. Like, dude, it in the Better than on the scroll, there are two copies of the same spell. Oh, nice. Yo, no, bro, two copies. <laughs> <laughs> one for me, my spell book, one to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Party fun! Yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, of you, course, I'll scroll Brunson, the party. Do you need an enemy scroll to Yes. I uh, have some potions. Scroll. And you're the only one who knows potions. So, what if he okay. writes it from his spell book to his spell book? It says. Then it could say that. Oh, then why doesn't he do that? Because we just haven't gotten a chance to. <laughs> no, like, yeah, he could right. write that scroll into his spell book. You can write from his spell book into your yeah, spell book. No, yeah, no, we have this planned out. But you have to. Yeah. We just need time. And yeah. we don't ever have time. Because <laughs> we are running into groups of people, like townsfolk, and saving people who are horse thieves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> um, um, so, it, so bottom line is, in the chest, you have... The only other thing that's in there is that you haven't done anything with is the ivory skull case. Oh! Uh, which you couldn't get open. Okay. I thought that was... Uh, then there's a rack that has six labeled potions. What is, oh, they're labeled? What does it say? Improved, reduced person. All of them? Yep. Sweet. We These can run around this complex them. like yeah. this <laughs> little tiny people. They like I'm a character And then a sack full of stuff. Oh, we can wait, chase after Eric. Like like you reduce yes. me? I just drop Eric. And oh, we're supposed to That's go to the thing. Oh, they were that magic one. Okay. And then there's the bag, and the bag, I'm just going to tell you now so we don't forget, <laughs> has uh, plat some platinum, gold, gems, a necklace, and a jade statue of a tiger. The, great the first thing I take is the pouch. <laughs> I know how powerful. So the Josh, first thing that I vote. exactly what we were talking about on to the take. Friday. <laughs> I'm not going to take it. I mean, I have the sack. So, can I look at the ivory scroll too? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Handed. It's just sitting next to me in here. I, you are okay. over here. I'll take a look at the ivory scroll. It has a lock that is formed of 30 buttons. Hmm. Can we try to complex. work together to get it? You may roll with advantage. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I have spellcraft, alchemy, planar lore, speed reading, juggling. You're juggling. <laughs> That'd be funny. That's, that's like the way okay, so we are taking our break. At this point, I want to catch you guys up. Um, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You too can make the world a better place. So basically what, what happened uh, from the last thing you remember is that the last session at the end, we had a, the battle with the giant rats um, that were coming out of the warrens, basically not too far inside the well. Um, defeated them, went on from there... Uh, Dion saved Bezor from a from a tripwire trap that shot out poisoned arrows. Fun. Then there was a trap that dropped a huge swinging axe down from the ceiling, uh, which clipped Theon and Mark. For like and then he damaged each. Yep. And oh. then Jake stopped it um, before it could hit anybody else. And then the party came to another port Cullis. And Bezor summoned a light to float up and down the hallway, which they came, when they came back today, it was still floating up and down the hallway. Um, 
and they, um, but when they got to the next Portcullis, they started thinking, you know, people are a little beat up, Mages don't have a lot of spells, blah, 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 so basically they talked themselves into retreating. They went back up to the town, when they got to the town, everybody was missing. Every last soul was missing from the town. Nobody did. And they found some tracks and found out that the town had been basically captured. The people were all taken out of the town and off into the woods. And uh, they found one little girl who was apparently a street urchin that was hiding. And Janny formed a liking with her, uh, fed her, took care of her overnight like that. And then they, uh, Charlotte and Mark, went out into the woods and followed the tracks of the wagons and people that they saw walking in horses and stuff, and they followed it to a fortress in the woods set up against a ridge line that looks very tough. A uh, ten-foot wall, three towers plus the ridge line, um, and uh, they saw 20-plus guards, humans, and hum- uh, hobgoblins. And when the little girl saw the attack, she said she saw a symbol that the hobgoblins had and Charlotte identified it as a symbol of a mercenary unit of hobgoblins that's very strong. And um, they came back, gave that report. Meanwhile, in town, everybody else was bedding down. You and Bezor bedded down in a house by yourself. We found a pot of stew there. We ate stew and bread with honey and uh, drank a little and slept in that house while everyone else slept in the other house. Jake guarded both houses from the roof. While he was guarding, a knight rode into town by himself, who turned out to be a knight named Umusi, who is a knight of the Dark Moon Protectorate, and a knight errant, and he... Dark Moon Protectorate? I'm sorry, I say Dark Wings Protectorate. Dark sorry. Wings Pass. Dark Wings Pass, there we go, got it. Anyway, yeah, so uh, Dark Moon Protectorate is rogues, uh, illusionists, um, but anyway, that's it could be anybody, it seemed to be, yes. Um, and so, yeah, so they they talked to him again in the morning, and in the morning it was Charlotte and Dion who went and talked to him, because by that time Jake had gone to bed, because he stayed up pretty much all night guarding, so you guys could be awake and work on spells and stuff. And um, she had an interesting conversation with him, in which he was slightly flirtatious, and she didn't seem to be open to his advances, even though he was exercising with his shirt off. She did do push-ups with him for a while, but it was actual push-ups. That's not a metaphor. <laughs> and so... It, a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, that's, it's a, it has to do with the high-level campaign. Um, when Kendra and Bono, because they're married, when they spend the night in the, in the, in the rooms, the people that are on the other side of them hear them doing calisthenics in the middle of the night. <laughs> that's, calisthenics. Calisthenics, yeah. <laughs> so that's the metaphor. So for for nightly uh, uh, intimacy. But anyway, so they uh, they talked to him, and he did not want to go down in the dungeon again. Uh, even though the party had calculated, they think that maybe something down here leads to under the fortress or in the vicinity of the fortress, because when Mark and Charlotte were out there, they saw more rat droppings than they expected, and rats in the forest are actually really uncommon. They're not forest creatures. They're generally urban creatures. And so it was, they thought the rats from here were getting out there somehow, or they were, they were coming out of the well and going back there, or whatever. But anyway, Brunson had a hunch that under the well may lead to somehow or other to the, under the fortress. fortress. Right. And so... Um, Look at you, Brunson. Under the sea. Yeah. Also, uh, Mark and... Charlotte noticed that one of the, the guys, the mercenary guys, was Rake. Rake, the, sword, the, the former sheriff of the nearby town. The one that we beat up and I caught. Tied up, but yeah, yeah really, sure. he's he's really tough short sword. Maybe yeah. Charlotte has his sword. Um, anyway, everybody got their spells back. A couple hours after dawn, they, he agreed to attack the fortress at the same time at noon or when Charlotte sends up a flaming arrow, whichever uh, happens. And so he was moving into position. Hardy went back down in the well. They found another Fort Cullis, which Jake opened, and then Theon went through. When he went through, he had to dodge a trap, a, pit, a pitiful pit trap that didn't have any spikes in the bottom of it. Um, and he, no, he jumped over it. It was 10 feet deep, but he jumped to the other side. 
And the party lowered themselves down and climbed up out the other side, which means it'll just slow retreat. Then they went down and went around to the left. Meanwhile, the glowing globe was still floating up and down the hall. And they went around to the left, and they found a room with a straw bed in it, and they fought a, a big badger, which was actually pretty tough, but um, that was unprovoked. Jake was, yeah, he, the badger wasn't provoked, but Dion went up and tried to hit it, and then Janny tried to hit it, and Janny actually did hit it. Dion missed both times, and then Jake hit it that time, and then twice in the next round and killed it. <laughs> Sounds all right. And I don't think the badger did any damage at all, which was really sad. But by the time it had started to screech and send up kind of a, like an alarm. It took three. Yes. It was pretty tough, yep. Uh, and one of Janice. My dad. She hit it hard. She hit it for max damage before you hit it. What is that? Six plus the magic of her staff. Anyway, they went into the, they come to another fork and they chose the right fork and it came into this large room that you're now in, which is a 60 by 40. And, um, that room has these all these little tunnels out the back of it, and um, Theon got attack, track, attacked by a swarm of actual rats. These are actual normal-sized rats. And between the sleep spell and the freeze animal spell uh, that Autumn did, they got most of them, enough of them, to get them chased away. And then apparently someone was hiding behind one of the stalagmites, and there was a burst of energy... And then a badger ran into one of the tunnels. That's where you're at. In Brooklyn, said out loud, I think we're dealing with Druid. Right. Did Charlotte tell us about Rake? Yes. Okay. Yep. Made a point to, in fact. Um, I am going to go make a quick copy of this map, hand out player B. Um, and I think sandwiches and maybe tacos are coming. And then after we, or as we eat, even, we'll get back into it. Sure. Somebody wanted to write down the money that was in the sack as party treasure. Arden, are we recording as group treasure? Yeah. Everyone was there when he got it, so. If he, uh, make sure it runs and tracks okay. that. 27 platinum pieces. Plus, he's going to need somebody to help him carry it. We have platinum. 27. 212 gold. Six gems. A gold necklace and a jade statue of a tiger. Made Theon's eyes light up. We're going to I'll make a copy. And then we'll go after. We're doing well, but we're, we've had... It's taken a little longer to get to. Stay tuned for more Lomunian adventures.